Welcome, everybody. This is too dark. Too dark to see. This is my live reaction to the long list of the Women's Prize for Fiction of 2021 that has been published about 39 minutes ago. And I'm a bit surprised because actually I saw that the long list was due for 7 p.m. and I thought it was GMT, but it was 7 p.m. Green, 7 p.m. Central European time. So the long list for the Women's Prize is already here, and I'm going to look it up on my phone now. I haven't seen it. So uh, you're going to get my live reaction to this beautiful prize, uh, which I'm very uh, keen in, in reading and in exploring and, and definitely ordering some of the books uh, to add to my TBR. So here we go. The long list for the 2021 Women's Prize, the inspiring books to read. I'm quoting The Independent here from England that has published everything. And we start 16 titles with the first title. And this is, come on, <laughs> let's get to the The Vanishing Half by Brit Bennett. This is the most expected title. I mean, everyone, everybody has had it and has it on their prediction videos, on their prediction lists, on the blogs and wherever. I've read this book last year. It's very, very beautiful. It's the story of the twins from Millard in Louisiana setting out to live their adult lives. One of them has pretty light skin and she's moving across the country and ending up in California. And she lives her life as a white woman where the other sister, the twin sister is returning to Millard in Louisiana and living a black woman's life. And after a generation, after their kids have been born, and after a whole generation, both women will meet again. And it's a very interesting story about race, about the desire to be uh, to live in another skin, maybe even, and what it takes and what you have to give up to, to be able to do this. The Vanishing Half is a very good choice, apparently, for the longest. I am satisfied. Number two is Small Pleasures by Claire Chambers, published by Weidenfeld and Nicholson. I haven't um, had this book on my list. It's Chambers' first novel in 10 years, and it's clearly been worth the wait. Not only has it landed itself a spot in the Women's Prize for Long for Fiction, says The Independent, but it also took the top spot in our guide to the best new books to read in 2020. It's set in 1957. And it follows Jean Swinney, the features editor of the North Kent Echo, spends her time writing about weddings and household hymns. She lives a rather uneventful life until a Swiss woman named Gretchen Tilbury writes to the paper, claiming her daughter is the result of a virgin birth. The editor then sets off to find out whether this is a miracle or a fraud. Um, this is Claire um, Chambers and her novel Small Pleasures. It, doesn't really sound so interesting to me. Well, number three, Piranesi by Susanna Clark. And I had this book on my list of 25 or 30 books that were eligible to be to make it up to my long list, but didn't make the long list that I predicted. But it is on the long list of the Women's Prize. So Susanna Clark, Piranesi, Blending Mystery and Magic. This multi-layered fantasy story is narrated by Piranesi who lives in the house. On Tuesdays and Fridays, he sees his friend the other, while sometimes he takes tributes to the dead, but often he is alone. Piranesi is the tale of his surroundings and the mystery inhabitants within it, and it's said to be a rich read with a gothic atmosphere. That is three of 16. Number four, I didn't have that one either. Amanda Craig, The Golden Rule, published by Little Brown and Company. Taken inspiration from Strangers on a Train by Alfred Hitchcock and Beauty and the Beast is a story of deceit and deception. When Hannah, a poor young single mother, is invited into the first class carriage of the London to Penzance train in Cornwall, she meets Jimmy, now Ginny, the epitome of elegance and her complete opposite. Hannah's life is turned upside down when they forge a plan to murder each other's husbands. Yeah, that sounds very much like Patricia Highsmith's and Alfred Hitchcock's Strangers on a Train. Hmm. Is it a remake? A rewrite, maybe? Featuring in our guide of the best recent books written by women, our reviewer wrote that this is perceptive and wise, particularly on the ever-growing gap between the rich and the poor, says the independent. The next book is a book that many of you have, say, have seen some 
maybe even some of you have read this by, I, I don't pronounce the name correctly, I know because it's Irish, this now is Dolan and Exciting Times, published by Weidenfeld and Nicholson, set in Hong Kong. The sharp, witty, and ultimately moving debut from Irish author Nowies Dolan explores a love triangle. Newly arrived 22-year-old English teacher Ava finds herself caught between the financial security of a non-committal banker and a luring lawyer. Examining class and sex, Dolan brings fresh insights on modern love that will inevitably make this a hit among those who love a coming-of-age novel. I love coming-of-age novels, and that's why Nowies Dolan might be the number one for me to put on a list of eventually buying them, even tonight, ordering them. Ah, beautiful, Burnt Sugar by Avni Doshi, published by Hamish Hamilton. This must be one of the favorites of the Women's Prize for Fiction. It would have deserved the Booker Prize probably, but many books have deserved the Booker Prize. But this debut by the Indian-American author Avni Doshi, which deals with the history of a mother and her daughter, a mother who did not particularly care for her daughter when she grew up. And now the daughter is an adult and she has to care for her mother, the mother who is suffering from dementia. And this is really um, an absolutely great novel where every sentence has like 200, 220 pages. Every sentence, every paragraph, every page is so well crafted by Avni Doshi. It's a great story of Antara and her mother and a great story also of Pune, a town, a city in India. So read this if you've never been to India. Almost, I felt almost like being in, in Pune when I when I read this book. It's amazing literature and should be making the shortlist without any problems. Avni Doshi, Burn Sugar. Because of You by Dawn French, published by Michael Joseph. Told with French's unfailing wit and warmth, Because of You is the tale of family bonds and the mother-daughter relationships that ultimately make us who we are. It explored the maternal explored the maternal bond and its challenges, as well as love and loss, mistakes and regrets. It doesn't say so much about the book, so I'm not really motivated of, oh, I want to get this, which is Don French and Because of You. The next one is Unsettled Ground by Claire Fuller, published by Fig Tree. This novel tells the stunning story of two middle-aged twins, Jeannie and Julius, who at the age of 51 still live with their mother, Dot. Following Dot's death, the siblings' carefully cultivated existence on the fringes of society begins to unravel as they discover more secrets, turning everything that they know about their lives on its head. Touching on the themes of love, friendship, and neighbors, it's a powerful exploration of loneliness and isolation. Well, okay. Not so interesting to me either. The next one is the one that I had on my list, so that's the third point that I score here. Add this on my prediction list. This is, of course, by Yag Yassi, Transcendent Kingdom, published by Viking. Yag Yassi is an author, an American Ghanaian or a Ghanaian American author. She lives in the United States, and her second novel, after Homecoming, her second novel, Transcendent Kingdom, is um, a painstaking, I'm, I'm going to buy this book, definitely, painstakingly moving portrait of a Ghanaian immigrant family that is ravaged by depression, addiction, and loss. It's about a woman studying at Stanford University in California. And her, I think her mother is suffering from deep depression, yes. And her brother is uh, suffering from drug addiction, and he eventually dies also in the course of the novel. The novel questions faith, religion, beliefs, and mental health, as well as the different ways people handle challenges such as racism and grief. So Yag Yazi, Transcendent Kingdom, is definitely a book to buy and a book to read on this long list. And the next one, my fourth point. Four points here now for me. How the One-Armed Sister Sweeps Her House by Sherry Jones, published by Tinder Press. This is a debut novel from Barbados, where poverty and mis I have already ordered this book. I'm waiting for it. Where poverty and misogyny exist on the surface, the remarkable debut from Jones focused on the life of four women. And there's one woman she has. She's living on Baxter's Beach in Barbados. She has a boyfriend who is a petty criminal. And uh, it, this is about poverty, about domestic violence, drug abuse, and mother-daughter relationships. And it takes us to the Caribbean. And we absolutely should read Caribbean literature to be able to broaden our horizon of knowledge and of things from a 
throughout the world. Number five, my fifth point already comes with the next book. I'm so happy about this. Five points. I've never scored five on the Booker. I have never did it. I scored five on the Women's Prize now. Luster by Raven Leilani, published by Picador. Yes, but it's also quite expected, isn't it? You have to say also a debut novel from the United States. Luster by Raven Leilani tells the story of the 23-year-old woman, Edie, and her awkward journey through modern life, navigating dead-end hookups, crushed ambitions, and an affair with a married man she met on a darling on a dating website. She marries this married man, a white guy who's a lot older than she is. She has a sexual relationship to him. But then because the guy is living such an open marriage, he invites her to come to his house to meet his wife. And his wife gets very along, much along with a lover and a strange relationship establishes. And I know that John the Bookman, for example, said there are lots of crazy things happening in this book, but he also liked it. And I think this is also a book for me because I like crazy surprises and page turners and twists as well. So Luster by Raven Lolani, very good choice, I think, by the jury here. No One Is Talking About This by Patricia Lockwood, published by Bloomsbury Circus, one of the more respected British publishers, is next here. Featuring in the Independence Guide to the Books to Look Out for in 2021, no one is talking about this. this is the debut novel from American poet Patricia Lockwood and tells a story of how one woman's life is turned upside down when something she posts on social media goes viral, equal parts witty and unexpected. It covers internet culture and human connection in a wry and intelligent way. This sounds interesting because I like all these kind of stories that have emerged over the couple of la the last two, three, four years, there are a couple of novels that have come out that deal with things that are posted on social media and then lead to reactions. I'm thinking of Mega Majumdar, A Burning. I'm also thinking of Vivek um, Ashraya from Canada with subtweets. So there are a couple of books who deal with this phenomenon. I think that must be interesting. The next one is Consent by Annabel Lyon, published by Atlantic Books. This novel follows two sets of sisters whose lives are linked when tragedy changes them forever. Exploring the complexities of their relationship as well as the care patient dynamic, it's said to be a compelling and thrilling read. I need to find out more about this. This is not enough for me to, to fetch my interest. Uh, Nothing But Blue Sky by Kathleen McMahon or McMahon, published by Sandy Covecrest. I like the cover of that book. A tender dissection of marriage, nothing but blue sky, follows David, a television journalist whose life is torn apart after the sudden death of his wife, weaving together his reflections on their life together and present day experiences he questions everything he thought he knew about her and this intimate examination of love, loss, and life itself. That sounds in a way, in a way very introvert, but also very interesting because I can very much identify with people who are in that period of life because I'm as old as I am, you know? And um, so when you reflect about things that, that are in the past and when you think about things that might have changed the course of life, like Graham Swift's novel, Here We Are, last year, it was an amazing novel that also asked this question of could our life path had been changed at a certain point and what would it what would it have been and how it is to lose someone and to, to, to lose life and love itself. That sounds interesting by um, Kathleen McMahon or McMahon, nothing but blue sky. Detransition Baby by Tori Peters. I'm surprised a little bit because this, uh, and I'm positively surprised because this must be the first time that a transgender author is on this long list of the Women's Prize for Fiction. This quick-witted novel centers around two women, one transgender and one cis cisgender, whose lives are turned upside down following a surprise pregnancy. Dealing with important issues such as suicide abuse towards trans people and what it means to be a mother, this is said to be both a timely and provocative read, and this sounds definitely like something that I should put on my long list for reading this year. The next one is not unexpected, but I didn't have it on my list. It's a she's a favorite of award juries. So Ally Ellie Smith Summer, published by Hamish Hamilton from last year, way back last year, the final book of Ally Smith's seasonal quartet. It defines our turbulent era, begins and ends in 2020, takes on the big issues and challenges from the year, including Brexit, the pandemic, and the Black Lives Matter movement. 
not everybody will love this one. And, and this was the long list. This was the long list? Was it everything? However, uh, this is everything that I have here on this. I'm going to check it now. So please don't go away. Women's Pride for Fiction cannot be the whole long list. It was so short. It felt so short doing this. Um, 16 books. I think we have now like six weeks on us to uh, read as much as possible from the long list. And then we will be presented already with a short list. So uh, for those of you who want to read everything of the long list, that's almost impossible within six weeks to read 16 novels. Some people can manage, I know, but, but I can't. So I'm, I will pick some favorites that sound interesting to me, where I like the author or where I like the, what it's about, and then I will see what I will do with it. Here is, again, the long list from the Women's Prize now. I'm looking at it again. Don French, Avni Doshi, Annabelle Lyon, Terry Peters, Noise Dolan. Yes, that's it. So um, it's going to be interesting. What books are you going to read from this long list? I will probably make um, another video on Sunday, of course, the wrap-up of the week where I can present one or two books or where I can tell you which books I'm going to buy, which I'm actually going to order tonight to have them uh, in my mailbox in hopefully like two or three weeks from now. So let me know your thoughts on the long list and who you are missing. I have at least five points, five books that were on my prediction list of um, the long list for the Women's Prize were are really on this long list. And this is five out of 16 is really very good um, because when I predict the Booker or when I predict the National Booker Award, it's like you have one or two out of 10. And that's this is almost nothing. So thanks very much for watching this. And I hope you have a great evening. I see you not tomorrow because tomorrow I'm not going to make a video. I did so many videos in the last two weeks. But we're going to see each other again on Sunday. So stay tuned and have a good reading time. Bye-bye.